So, uh, you know, we, we source all of our high-end computer chips, uh, mostly from Taiwan, from some, some from South Korea. And we just can't be that dependent on a, on a country so far away from the continental United States for our missile system uh, chips, for uh, the components that go into our radars and our aircraft and, and, and so forth. So this is an effort to do exactly what all other large economy countries are now doing, which is to incentivize the location of these chip fabrication plants into the United States. And naturally, many of them will be located across the heartland in states like Indiana, which I happen to rep represent. Uh, of course, uh, rank and file Americans are, are excited about the economic opportunities, and they should be. Uh, we're very good at making things and, and making high-end things very well, uh, but they should also understand that there's a national security imperative for this so that we can be more resilient the next time a pandemic or any sort of natural disaster occurs. And also, if there's a geopolitical event, whether that's the uh, intentional distortion of markets by a state capitalist economy like uh, the communist Chinese, or an interruption uh, in, in, on account of, of uh, design by the Chinese communist leader. So we need to be resilient against that sort of thing. That's why this is a national security investment. Senator, it's, it's a real, uh, there is a real price tag for it. It's, it's, a, it's a fair amount of money. And other uh, critics maybe from the right have said, you could, you could go across the board. With, with all companies and do a research and development uh, tax credit. You could do a, uh, you know, make it easier to write things off. You could, you could not raise corporate taxes. There's so many other ways that you could do it and spend that money where you're not saying, okay, we're just doing this to the, the, the semiconductor industry. Then the other critic would say, now you're going to have every company that competes with China coming to you hat in hand and saying, you know, you help the chip makers, look what they're dumping this, they're doing that, they're non-competitive here. We need a subsidy too. Where's our subsidy? And, and both of those things are, are slippery slopes. Well, listen, our job is to navigate these slopes as, as members of Congress, as elected officials. And I can provide a, a real distinction between a, a high-end computer chip, which essentially is needed to run a modern economy, uh, anything with an on-off switch, frankly, requires a computer chip these days. So this is not only the petroleum of the 21st century. Uh, this, is, this is a higher value added, and, and uh, we have to have uh, our own strategic source of these. Uh, right. But I would also say uh, that, you know, to the extent others come hat in hand to us, um, I will push them back. Those who argue for... for uh, broader R&D incentives uh, to this level of generosity uh, won't be well received here in Congress. I do favor, uh, in fact, my name is on it. I introduced an extension of the existing R&D deduction. We want to make it a, a credit for high growth companies. So I've tried to, I've tried to socialize that idea and uh, see if we might get that passed. Uh, it's really important that we incentivize research and development. We have the most innovative people, the most creative businesses in the world. And I think before year's end, we may meet with success uh, with respect to that R&D provision in our tax code as well. well we, still, we still do lead the, the world in, in the technology and in, in chip making equipment. We lead the world and in, in the intellectual property. A lot of what, what, what we're importing are just commodity type chips where it makes more sense in, in some respect. Uh, for labor and other issues, um, you know, maybe not to make all of them here. So uh, once again, you're, well, yeah, the government's yeah. getting involved with, to, with capital allocation, which they're, you know, there's a, I, there's a few instances, I guess, where they're not, you know, public-private yeah. partnerships, but a lot of times it's not a good outcome. It's wasteful. Well, if you'll allow, just briefly, sir, um, I, I, I think it's a, an important point you brought up. The, the differential in, in price between a chip made in Asia and a chip made in the United States, uh, very little of it has to do with labor or environmental standards, the sort of things we typically think about as we analyze comparative advantage. Instead, they're related to incentives. So when you have Japan, mm -hmm. Taiwan, South Korea, Communist China, European countries all offering incentives to locate there, you know as well as I do that uh, companies look to the next marginal investment return. Where, where can I get the highest ROI for my owners for that next dollar invested? Uh, if we don't have these sorts of incentives that other countries do, we're not going to be able to attract the capacity here, and, and frankly, we won't be resilient. The other thing I'd say is we're not ahead in some technologies. Hypersonic technology, which is used to carry nuclear weapons, 
Uh, the Chinese are actually ahead of us, again, a national security investment. Artificial intelligence, Eric Schmidt and, and his national security uh, commission on this have indicated that within a couple of years, China could pass us with respect to AI, which will be critical to fighting and winning 21st century wars. So it's really important that we make these investments now, lay the seed corn for future growth and, and resiliency in the future.